<laughs> are you ready to, to uh, talk about the uh, Lyft CEO reaction uh, when it came to the interview that he gave? You bet. Um, right. I was going to be very brutal, but then, uh, you know, there is a chance we get him on the show. So I I'm still not going to pull any punches there. You know, look, there's a new sheriff in town. The two of them are out. Two founders are out. OK, um, you know, they made it look like, you know, they were not pushed out or there was like, you know, they just wanted to hand the baton over to this guy. David Richer is his name. Ex Microsoft, ex Amazon. Um, well, we got some news, which we're going to say after we listen to his interview and make some comments that maybe it wasn't that simple. So um, I, I, I want to give this guy a chance. Seriously, like, you know, any CEO, any new CEO should have probably a quarter under his belt to to straighten the ship up. And from what I've seen, and I also tweeted, by the way, hey, by the way, Dara, are you watching? The guy was already in the car doing trips in San Francisco. He did like a few trips or four or five trips. I don't think he had a $20 million security detail chasing his butt, right? Okay. So, <laughs> And the guy tweeted it and put the pictures up. And I'm like, hey, great. Come to the driver's you know, side a little bit. Let's see what we go through on a daily basis when we're picking up. And it was at night, by the way, Chris. So mm. all kudos to you, Mr. Risher. I, I And I already got a couple of emails from a couple of drivers who had problems with Lyft that they got solved. I'm like... All right, so let's give this guy a chance. 90 days, let's see if he can do anything about it. You know, we're still not going to pull any punches, obviously. You know, the, the, you know, he yeah, said it'll some be things that I disagree with. See what happens. happens. Uh, but yeah, he, he's been kind of going, making the rounds on interviews. And before we even get going, um, you know, we, we just want to extend the uh, open invitation, Mr. Risher, if you'd like to come on on Show Me the Money Club, talk to drivers. Uh, and kind of uh, have a driver centric uh, conversation and kind of go that re that route and way. Uh, you know, you always have an open invitation to come on the show. Uh, hit up Sergio at Sergio at the rideshareguide.com uh, and uh, we will get you scheduled on the show and uh, it'll be pretty interesting. So, yeah. all Definitely. right, with that being said, let's go to the interview that was just done. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play some of the interview and then uh, we'll pause it, react to it, share your thoughts as well. Uh, we'd love to see what you got to say in the comments. And, uh, you know, if we're doing this uh, and this is not even for the live stream, throw it in the comments uh, and let us know your thoughts between all of this. So. The battle for the rideshare market is as hot as ever, and Uber's big competitor has a new CEO leading the charge. We're joined by Lyft's incoming chief executive officer, David Risher, and our very own Brian Sozzi as well. A pleasure to have you on the show, David. So, I mean, investors are really going to be looking to see where you're taking the company next. What are going to be your top priorities when you take the helm in April? So great to see you, Rochelle. Great to see you, Brian. Listen, our top priority is getting a great experience to our customers. I mean, to a certain extent, it's a focus on the basics. Make sure we pick you up on time. Make sure when you open our app, we're priced in line with the other guys um, and get you where you want to go. And you know what? Rideshare is a big deal. It's really improved people's lives in so many ways. And um, I'm kind of I'm kind of OK with your calling it. You know, the battle is back because we're, uh, we're we're ready to fight and, uh, and and hopefully do pretty well. David Bryan here. Good to see you here. And congrats on this, uh, this, this appointment here. Now you've been on this, on this lift boards. So you are. All right. So yep. wh what do you think about that first uh, response there? When he um, came to you, you know what? He, he looks like uh, he's ready to compete, right? I mean, the first thing he says, we're going to take care of our customers. Great. Okay. Of course. Um, and uh, you know, I look, I think they tried this with the old regime. I'm being brutally honest here. Okay. Yep, exactly, Miles BNB. You took the words out of my mouth. Look, Uber has a lot of levers to pull to compete. Uber is not afraid of this this comment here. Okay, if they want, if they're going to cut prices, I, I'm being brutally honest here to all the drivers who are watching and listening later. You know, uh, that's called, called lower base rates. I mean, you know, it's called, it's called less incentives. And and to me, you know, him mentioning the customer first, of course, he has to because that's the golden goose that lays the golden egg. Uh, but I'm not sure he can win that battle, to be honest with you, competing with Uber, because Uber has so many pens on so many different fires like they did the last two quarters. You know, they got into a little bit of a, you know, battle over there. And in top 20 cities, Lyft was higher priced than Uber pretty much on every city. Okay. 
So I get it. I understand it. You know, I'm not going to say much about it. Time will tell. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it looks like price war, you know, is, is back on and, um, and nobody, you know, the only winner in a price war to me is the passenger. Um, I don't think that anybody wins, including the companies themselves. So. Yeah. So we got, we got quite a few good comments already saying, uh, price war and then cut the prices, but, uh, never accepted those reduced pay rides. Uh, so there's quite a few there, uh, what people are saying, at least on the first part. Um, so let's let's move on to the next uh, section. Familiar with the company, what has gotten Lyft to this point and what do you need to course correct? You know, I think the thing is we got to focus. We have to really focus on rideshare and our customers and our drivers. In a way, it's very simple. The more passengers and riders you have, the more drivers want to drive. The more drivers want to drive, the faster your pickup time. So as long as we're doing a really good job on those basics, that's going to get you know us part of the way there. And then, of course, there are questions that I know you're going to want to ask about where we're going to go in the future. I probably won't be able to say too much about that just yet, but we've got uh, a lot of big plans already brewing. And I know you said. All right. Okay. So <laughs> there's the next response. Um, yeah. I mean, look, um, I've already read what some of the plans are. I mean, if I may break that. Um, they're looking to get rid of um, shared rides, okay? And I think it'll be welcomed for every goddamn driver that's out there. Um, and they're looking to enhance on their wait and save mode because they said it kind of overlaps. Why do we need both? I agree. Look, you know, this is this old comment that all ride shares started with. You know, they will keep they cut the fares, and every time Uber cut the fares, Lyft matched it. But besides that, what Uber used to say is that the busier you are, the more you will make. Well, then that's not necessarily so, because at a lower fare, I have to drive more hours to make the same amount of money I was making the month before. So, uh -huh. you know, I do get it. I do get his point, right? Um, I mean, to me, nothing is, look, this is a simple, simple business, Mr. Risher. I mean, from me to you, <laughs> It's pick up a point A, drop off a point B, and to the next one. Um, the only lever you can pull at the moment is going to be just on the pricing side of your algorithms and and how much you're willing to take a punch at Uber. And and I'm hoping the driver doesn't get hurt. But when these two companies get in a race to zero, um, driver does get hurt quite often. So I get it. I get his point. You know, he's like back to basics kind of a thing. But I never thought they got out of the basics, Chris. They never <laughs> got into delivery. They never got no. into shopping. They never got into anything. So I'm not sure what the other two guys were doing wrong when it came to basics. So uh, we'll see. You know, time will tell. Again, I was going to say more about, you know, this interview, but um, with the hope that we get him on the show, number one. Number two, you know, everybody needs a chance, right? Let's give the guy a quarter. Let's see what he can do. And hopefully he will do good things. Well, I think the biggest thing and, you know, Lyft, if you're watching or even David, if you're watching, uh, one of the things that I would recommend as the show of the title or I'm sorry, as the title of the show, show me the money. That means you want us on the platform. You got to show the money. So, you know, maybe you go on a bidding war to try to offer that olive branch to drivers to be on your platform over Uber, because I'm going to say for me, my my time goes to the highest bidder. And Sergio, your time goes to the highest bidder. Uh, and people in the chat, if you want to say whether that's true or not, does your time go to the highest bidder? Let us know. Uh, but either way, yes. Show me the money and I'll drive for you. Yep. Which they did this week. They showed me the money. They gave me mm -hmm. 16 trips. They gave me 16 trips for 260 guarantee. I'm going to do nice. it. I'm going to knock it out tonight and tomorrow morning. I'll be done with it. And, you know, do all my shorties with the lifts. Wonderful, amazing. Please don't take that away, Mr. Richard. Okay? Please. Okay? The the area filter? I mean, come on, bro. That's like the brilliant, the most brilliant thing you guys oh, yeah. have ever done. Okay, please. Yep. So Let's I'll, I'll mess around and take their money. And, you know, uh, and then <laughs> thanks for the weekend one. I'm sure there is going to be one on the weekend as well. So I'll take the money there. Look, you know, this guy's saying we pick up fast. Passenger, pay attention. You know, the first two questions. Driver has not been mentioned yet. So let's see what the, what the next one brings. No, well, they did. The, he did say driver when it came to, you know, if there's more customers, then more drivers are happy because 
that means that they're able to get rides, which in yeah. turn lowers the, the, the wait time. Obviously, it is customer-centric on those two, but he did mention the driver being the more drivers you have, the, the shorter the pickup time. So yeah. Uh, yeah. again, customer-centric though. You know, now is going to be that time for that battle. We know you don't want to really compete with Uber and its existing services. So what would the plan be if you're not going to compete in those same spaces? Well, I mean, look at what Uber's doing. So Uber has decided, I think their business model depends on uh, being able to deliver, you know, pizzas and, you know, tuna sandwiches and packages and all kinds of other things. The problem that I see with that is as a rider, I'm just not that excited about getting in the car with, with the tuna sandwich. And as a driver, the idea of double parking, you know, outside the restaurant and getting a ticket, and then it's just a different thing and not getting paid as much, by the way, as you do for rideshare. So I think to a certain extent, you know, this is still a very young market. You know, we're still talking about fractions of people and, and by the way, fractions of activity because of COVID. And I think over time, as more people get out, as more people come back together, there's a lot of room for both of us. And I think if we stay focused on rideshare, uh, we're going to do really well. Uh, David. All right. So I don't know what to say to that. Here only. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I mean, seriously. Um, okay. Look, he said, you know, one thing that that is abundantly clear over the last two quarters, they're losing market share to Uber, is because of pricing for nothing else, and is also because called something called network effect, right, or power of the platform that Dara sells every quarterly earnings call. Look, as an Uber driver, Lyft driver, DoorDash, all these people, okay. And um, I have tons of apps on my phone, okay? But that's that's what we suggest anyway. That's not the point. The point is, when he says, I don't want to put a, drive, a passenger in the car with a pizza or a tuna fish sandwich, sir, that's not factual, okay? I'm not going to have pizza in my backseat and accept a rideshare trip and do it because the app won't let me anyway. So maybe a little bit more caution there. The reason Uber is where it's at and you guys where you're at as far as the stock price is concerned, because Uber pivoted correctly and got into food delivery and delivery of everything and anything, you know, during the pandemic, which they had the money to do. You guys probably didn't have the money to do and you didn't get in there. But the analogy, I think, to me, is kind of silly that that passengers don't want to get in a car with a pizza or a tuna sandwich. I mean, come on now. Right. Um, you know, I, I think I, I'm again, I'm just going to let it, a little slide here because I think what you're saying is that like, as, a, as an Uber driver and Uber Eats delivery person, I can basically do three hours of ride share in the morning, do lunch rush on Uber Eats or DoorDash, get back on the ride share in the afternoon rush hour, and then do dinner rush on the weekends or during the week um, for an Uber Eats and DoorDash again. Did you just see that I did not mention Lyft one time? Because that's the power of the platform, sir. Um, I don't have to have Lyft, honestly, because you have a worthy competitor. Now, if you're going to pay me more than Uber, I will certainly pay attention to it. Okay. But I think the point, Chris, that he makes is that rideshare passengers don't want to be in a car with the tuna sandwich is kind of silly. So, <laughs> well, I mean, if they were going to do, I mean, is, is this him saying that Uber is going to start doing shared rides between a passenger? and a food delivery no they're not going to do that <laughs> no i know it's not but here's the thing the other the other side of the coin is how many drivers are multi-apping which means yeah they are going from food delivery to ride share you know that just kind of seems like you're out of touch there because uh yeah. you can go on any platform so if you want to do lyft and doordash if you want to do uber eats lyft doordash and uber you can there's nothing stopping you there so Maybe a lot of drivers are already in the food delivery space and are. not doing just ride share alone. So that's mm -hmm. something that you kind of got to figure. But the other thing is, do you see Lyft or any ride share company for that matter actually being profitable at a one trick pony? Or do you have to continue to look at new avenues to bring in more income? What do you yeah, think? I mean, I, I definitely think you need more avenues, but I don't think they have the funding to get into the game now. I think they're late to the delivery game, uh, which mm -hmm. Uber correctly did. Um, look, the, the the problem with all of this is when you're a one trick pony, you have to do that really, really well. And you have a gigantic competitor against you. Right. And and whatever you do, Uber will be able to match or, you know, go lower than you because they have so many levers to pull. 
you know, they can play with the take rates all they want. They can, until they put the dagger in your heart, they can do it. So what I think, yeah, that's a good point, Tony. Um, what I think this guy has to do, okay, you know, is, is think of some other vertical that could be immediately positive to the bottom line. And there isn't much that, that they can do other than maybe, maybe, you know, a deal with Amazon, maybe packages, if not pizzas or tuna sandwiches, maybe packages. I don't know. But mm. by just doing ride share only and continuing with the same message as the other two exist, ex exiting founders did, I don't know if it's going to work. But again, you know, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure they have things in plan. Otherwise, this change wouldn't have happened. And, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, but I think being a one trick pony is not going to work out. Yeah. And then the other thing, do you see any expansion happening from this or that's do you one see thing? That's one thing that I think they could do because it's, you know, expand obviously because they're in Canada and the U S only and yep. Uber is global. So, you know, again, the global competition, look, Uber tried to compete in Russia. They got kicked out. Uber tried to compete in China. They got kicked out. Uber tried to compete in India and the biggest, you know, most populated markets in the world. They have competitors there, local competitors. It is not an easy game to play globally, and they need cash. They need a lot of money, and mm -hmm. they're they're not in a cash rich position at the moment. So I'm not sure. I think I think one thing I have to give Mr. Risher is this: is there is a lot to fix at Lyft, okay? Yep. And you know, put your house in order first, and then maybe go for expansion because. I think they missed the boat on that, Chris. They missed the boat on yeah. deliveries. They now, missed the boat on. Now, the on last the question: If driver, I mean, really, the only way to to fix that that ship right now is probably having layoffs coming, yep. um, because you got to tighten you got to tighten the purse strings. Yep. That means you don't pay two hundred two hundred thousand dollars for balloons like yep. Uber did. You don't go out and get a pizza party every single day uh, week yep. like yep. Uber did. You got. Uh, you don't have thirty six thousand employees like Uber does, uh, yeah. which we're going to be talking about all that stuff in a little bit yeah. uh, when it comes to salaries and and all that. So well, there is a question. There is a question they asked him. You know, I think his fourth or fifth question about that. That you know, mm -hmm. there are more cuts coming, and he kind of hinted. Then we'll see. You know, the answer, and then we'll just follow up with that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one thing I think that would, especially if you're going to try to go into a price war. You know, you got to kind of trim the fat around. And uh, you know, try to operate as as lean and efficient as you can in yeah. order to to you know hit the next level to yeah. say, and then hopefully hopefully that will not hurt drivers' pockets. Yeah. Well, one uh, last thing on this question. One last thing on this question that he answered was that you know pandemic is over, markets are just opening. No, sir, that's not true. You, you, actually, Uber, other than the West Coast has equaled or surpassed every matrix when it comes to pre-pandemic levels. The West Coast mm -hmm. is dragging, and guess what? Lyft's largest market is the West Coast, okay? So California, obviously. So, you know, you're losing market share. Why? Why are you losing market share? It's because, look, you know, it's price agnostic. I mean, you know, passengers are not stupid. They're going to price trips on both apps. There's no loyalty in this game, honestly. You know, and and they're yeah. gonna go with the, whoever picks them up fastest and whatever the, whoever gets them their cheapest. So obviously, you know, the, you know, on the flip side though, Uber also became the household name. They're the Kleenex in yeah. rideshare. Yeah. So you know, you, you don't think of facial tissues. You think most of the time you think Kleenex. Yeah. That's a name brand. Yeah. Uh, same thing with uh, Jacuzzi. You know, yeah. they're the name brands that you yeah. think of. So Uber became that. You know, that's what you see in TV shows. That's what you see in movies. They say Uber. Very rarely do you see Lyft. Uh, so I think that's something if you want to position yourself. So people need that brand recognition, especially those who may not have used the services yet. If there's somebody who hasn't used a service, maybe they're older, maybe they just have their own car. They don't need the, the service for whatever reason. Yeah. When they're going to think of a ride share or something to use, they're going to sit down and say, oh, well, I know Uber. So let's let's download the Uber app. So, again, yeah. well, Uber, you know, how many times you know how many times I've had a Lyft passenger in the car and they'd be on the phone. Right. Mm -hmm. And they would be talking. They, go, they, they will say, I'm in an Uber. I'm like, yeah, you're on a uh -huh. Lyft. Like, you know, I mean, I mean, that goes to show. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Nathaniel is here. Our brother on wheels, the winner of Show Me the Money, Paid Forward, Sunshine Man Award. Hand to Nathaniel. 
There you go, my man. We announced you're winning already, so you know. So there you go. Yep. Congrats. But yeah, I mean that that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Uh, so. yeah. yeah. So next, right, I mean, you know, I I I wish him the best. But we have a couple more questions. Let's just go through those real quick, and then your first ninety days in, how will you immerse yourself in the business? Are you going to be? Uh, we've talked to John Zimmer a lot uh, in in recent years. He he's been driving these cars. I mean, he he makes. Uh, he says, "Look, I'm out there driving these cars. I'm I'm connected with drivers. Do you do you plan to do the same? And and have you done the same?" Yeah, I haven't yet. Uh, I did get my car inspected this past weekend. Good news, it passed. And I also passed the background check, so you know I'm well on my way. Um, but look, that's one of the great things about John is he's been so passionate about making sure he really kind of understands the details of the business. I'll be doing that. I'll be, of course, meeting with employees, as you do. have been talking a lot to investors uh, and to the press to make sure people understand that Lyft is back and the customers uh, have a real choice right now. Hold on. Before, I want to know, where are you talking to drivers in that yeah i know you're talking, you're talking to shareholders you're talking to employees but the ones who are bringing you the money where are you talking to so well, again there's, there's, I, I obviously i watch you this. on yeah well <laughs> I, I, you know what you know it, it seems like the same thing you know same yep. shit, different day kind of a commercial you know what i'm saying yeah, so so let me, let me finish this let me finish this segment and yeah. then we'll go i, I just uh you know, that just came to mind when I said yeah, that, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, you got to if you want to talk to all, you got to talk to your drivers who are the driving force behind your passengers getting from pick up to drop off. Yep. If they're not there, you got no business. So and, you know, and, and I almost hate to bring this up proactively, but I'll do it. Look, efficiency is also in the air. And so we've got to focus on doing the absolute most important thing so that our drivers and our, um, our riders uh, get the best possible experience. At a, at a price that's in line with with what the competition uh, well, offers on efficiencies day yeah so right. so first of all kudos to mr Vischer. um he tweeted he got approved and he was out this weekend he did a few trips took some pictures um you know i actually tweeted him back saying that you know now show us your numbers and then i'll really will applaud you how many <laughs> trips did you do Let's see if you hit the 35 per active hour. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, obviously, no response, but I also invited them to the show. Mr. Risher, you're more than welcome. Show up anytime you want. Um, the question here is, again, as you correctly stated, Chris, no mention of the driver yet. You know, at, just at the end, maybe efficiency, you know, that kind of a thing. Look, Mr. Risher, this is one thing that you can really, really do, Okay respect the driver, help the driver, because dri there are loyal drivers to only Lyft, believe it or not, Chris. They're not multi-apping. They're just driving mm -hmm. for Lyft, and they have been driving yep. for Lyft. And to me, you know, this 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 cutbacks that you guys had, that you want to, this in-app support only, if you can just fix that first, that would be like, drivers will love you for it, okay? Because all we're doing is chasing our tail, Mr. Richard. But besides the point, the, the most important thing that, that I'm hearing here is efficiency, competition, you know, pricing, and, and, and you know, Lyft is back. Well, where had Lyft gone? Lyft had not gone anywhere. You just, you know, just you're doing your ride share trips and you're, you're up to 20 million, uh, 400,000 from what I saw there, uh, monthly active users which is about 2 million less than the pre-pandemic level. So while Uber is hitting all those marks and actually getting to new higher marks at 132 million monthly active users, you're kind of stagnating right around 20. So, you know, maybe he has a point, Chris, maybe he has a point saying that customer first and get that market share that they lost back. But again, you know, it's a commodity business, right? How mm -hmm. much can you cut without jeopardizing your top line and bottom line, right? I mean, yeah. those are, there's, a, and, and you know, I mean, they definitely they definitely need to focus on the customer because yeah. though they're they're ordering, and they if they're not ordering, if they're going to another platform like Uber, um, or if there's like a local one or something within that particular market, um, you know, they're going to be up shit's creek without a paddle because yeah, yeah they, they need the, they need the the riders to be able to do that. They need the drivers to be able to drive them. So you know, yeah. it's this this fine line that they got to walk. The yeah. only thing I hope that you don't do, Mister Risher is don't give me emails that says it's the year of change and then give all these lists of things that you're going to change like uber did when dk came in uh and, do you remember that right yeah 
Oh yeah. man, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I think I think we gotta give this guy the benefit of the doubt for about <laughs> one quarter, maybe, and then see where it goes. Yeah, I, I am. Oh, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm, He's, I, he seems like a pleasant I'm person. Yeah, yeah. Giving him a chance. I mean, yeah. as long as things get ironed out, as long as things seem to to get pick up. The one thing, the one thing, though, Mister Risher, if you're watching, you need to to look into this immediately. And this is the lift reroute. Uh, yes, when sir. when when I accept a ride, it's based on what I think is going to be right. Meaning, and especially with upfront pay at this point. I know the pickup, the drop off. I know the distance. I know how much I'm getting paid. I do not want to accept a ride. And then I'm on my way to pick that person up a couple minutes away, whatever it might be. And then all of a sudden I get this notification that says, oh, you've been rerouted. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't want that. And every single time I go in the app and I cancel it because I don't want to be rerouted. I don't know. I didn't accept that. And that pisses me the hell off. It's pissed me off since the moment I started Lyft and it continued on. So my threshold on accepting rides from Lyft, it's got to be four minutes or less away. That's it. With Uber, it could be 10, 12 minutes, depending on the particular ride. So yeah. these types of things, please put into effect and change immediately. Yeah. That switcheroo, needs- yeah, that switcheroo is a killer, man. You know, I, I'm oh. like... I mean, I, I'm actually now, I've gotten a couple of emails, which I was going to talk about it, but um, they're saying that, you know, we recommended for everybody to no more new requests when you, you know, when you pick up, pick somebody up. So when you go in a hmm. search zone, you don't kill this or all the good stuff. A lot of people are doing it. They're saying Lyft is overriding that now. You can take a passenger, say no new requests on the way to pick up, and they're still switching you on. And I'm going like, how is that possible? Wow. That's crazy, huh. you know? So yeah. I'm going to have to, th- yeah, I'm going to have to test that. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I haven't turned Lyft on because Uber's been showing me the money. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I mean, Lyft did, did show me the money now. So uh, I'm going to test that out and see yeah. too, and yeah. we'll report back. But yeah, yeah. that. Oof. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we, you know, yeah. I mean, look, man, there is there is a lot to do for this guy. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt, and you yeah. can come and talk to tens of thousands of driver all at once, Mister Richard. So invitation all open right. anytime. There we go. Yep, let's move on. Okay, but now, Lyft has been very aggressive in cutting expenses. Do you see more opportunities to do that? And then secondarily, uh, some data out this morning by uh, on the sell side saying some trends in your business have started to stabilize towards the end of the quarter. Anything you can share there? I can't really share there. You know, I think you uh, kind of understand why. But I will say that for the last 15 years, I've been running 14 years, I've been running an organization that has to solve big problems, in this case around literacy at, you know, for world leader, but with very, very small budgets. And so I'm very, very comfortable with the idea that, um, you know, honestly, there, he, sometimes you can sort of get twice the team, uh, you know, without twice the people. So we're doing a lot of work there to try to figure out how to how to get our costs um, as, as good as they can be. And I know. Mm, I'd be, if I was employed at Lyft, I wouldn't like that comment. Let me tell you that. <laughs> well, you know, here, here's the thing. Anytime you're going to have some sort of change, you're going to have, uh, you know, people laid off. You're going to have, uh, you know, efficiencies looked at and figured out how to streamline certain aspects of things. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's layoffs coming. How much, though? I don't know. Um, do you know the current employee count there? Yeah, 4,700, 4,800. Okay. How many? I, I'm wondering how many are actually needed in in order to have the that company. We will work. find out. But you know, the last cutback was uh, about 700, right? Yeah. Um, and it was all the hubs and green light hubs and 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 what do you call that? Uh, driver support centers, whatever they were. You know, mm-hmm. and then they switch from uh, only platinum drivers have phone support. Everybody else is on in app support, which you know it's maddening, like maddening, crazy. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. So. You know, look, man, I, you know, we're going to talk about that. Actually, I'm going to talk about quite a bit when we talk about Uber's salaries, exec salaries and company numbers. Um, you know, for such a simple business as picking up point A, dropping off point B, and this is just right here, by the way. I don't know why you guys need 4,700, 4,800 employees, to be honest with you. And um, <laughs> so, but, you know, that's I think my the biggest thing is you should have a team that is testing out certain aspects, and that is it. Not having like multiple tests, um, like what, what was his name um, from Para, who we had on, and he worked at David. Uber, and he's saying, yeah, we, yeah, yeah David, David. Yeah. We, 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 when they're running multiple tests uh, and different, th- it's like no, you have one team that's doing different tests and things like that, just to, to, to figure it out and out. 
the rest you have working on your app uh, and then, you know, uh, any other clerical side of things. Um, and then, you know, cut the HR department. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, look again, again and again, you know, again, it's one trick pony. Time will tell what's going to change, what's not going to change. And hopefully drivers will benefit. And we're, we're all for that. Um, but, you know, we'll see. But if I was a true Lyft coder or an employee and I wasn't doing my job, um, I'd be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to pick up the slack just a little bit. Yeah, just to so you your, can pick up your job. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you are expendable, uh, make yourself non-expendable in order to, you know, yeah. maybe survive that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see. I know you do a lot of focus on the customer experience and during the pandemic, you had a lot of people working from home at this point, still expecting some sort of long term hybrid work experience. How will you then grow the company from here if that is going to be the longer term trend? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, of course, there are going to be hybrid work environments. There's no question. That's the new reality. But I would say, if anything, I'm feeling a bigger push to say, you know what, let's get people back out of the house and, and back to work. And that's not just sort of a philosophical thing. It's a practical thing. Decisions can be made faster. Mentoring happens more at a time where consumers are under so much financial pressure. Companies like us have to work really hard to make sure we're providing the best value. And frankly, a lot of the time that happens with people together in front of a whiteboard. So, you know, I sort of think, you know, it's a mistake to think that we're going to be closer in the future. Uh, and, and not that you said that, but, but I actually think over time, more and more people will want to get out and back together. That's where the magic happens. Oh, <laughs> you know, again, uh, no more, uh, not one driver uh, response there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're at the end of the interview almost and not one thing, you yep. know, but hey, did you have anything on that particular? No, I mean, it's more of the same, you know, it's like a redundant oh. question that she asked. And, and, and because look, these, these, these journalists, they don't know, they don't know seriously what's going on. They just have scripted hmm. stuff that's going back and forth and, you know, nothing relevant really. Um, give him a few softballs and have him hit it out of the park. Okay, fine. You know, as you know, these things are mostly scripted. Um, again, sir, with all due respect, how's Uber at or above pre-pandemic customer levels in every single city, important city or state except the West Coast, which just about they're catching up this quarter, and you are 10% behind that. The pandemic has been over, I guess, for Uber, but not over for you guys. I don't know what else to tell you, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. I, don't Especially know. I mean, I don't want to be tough on this, man. It was just like, I don't know. No, I know. I think it's just the frustrations of, of Lyft and what they've been uh, and the decisions that they've kind of gone through over the last several years that led them to this particular point. So, you know, I, 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 again, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, too. Uh, I hope Lyft continues on. I hope they don't get, uh, you know, transferred. I don't hope not merged, not sold, nothing like that. Um, you well, know, we need to ride sharing platforms in order to keep things uh, at least at a level playing field. Yeah, uh, we definitely need even yeah. better, but yeah, we don't need a monopoly for sure because then God helps drivers. If Uber becomes a monopoly, Lyft disappears. God help drivers. If you mm -hmm. guys are complaining now, then you're going to figure out the evil algos <laughs> if Uber becomes oh. a monopoly. Oh. Yeah. To drive that magic, you need drivers, David. Do you have that access to yeah. the labor pool that you need? We do. We do. It's driver supply is always an issue. The truth of the matter is if you pay well, and we for sure have to focus on that, drivers tend to come. Um, you know, it's interesting. I had a great ride with a driver in Atlanta, and he said, what I love about driving for Lyft is I'm never going to go broke. I'm never going to go broke. I just have to drive. And same with the guy here in San Francisco, Luis. Great, great guy. He said, look, in construction, I made 600 bucks a week. And that was the top. I couldn't go above that. There just wasn't more work than that uh, at, 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 my, uh, at my level. But I can drive as much as I want. And then in two weeks, I have the control to be able to go to a bachelor party. So I think for drivers, actually, you know, there's a lot of upside for them still. Ah, oh, first one with drivers, huh? Last well, question. Yeah, that was it. So, um you There's know. one more. Yeah. Okay. So, so he goes, um, if you pay drivers well, they will come. Yes. Except that the macro economy is helping you anyway. So honestly, I don't think you're going to need to put out too many incentives for drivers to show up. Um, well, you can do, sir. Honestly, you know, first of all, get rid of that minimum fare of $2.62. We're in 2023 with 10% inflation running, especially for a city like Los Angeles. That's a, that's like an insult, really. 
If you want to help the drivers, let's get that moving up a little bit, number one. Number two, um, supply is going to be there as long as the economy is slowing down and a lot of people's W-2s are not enough and they need to you know, make a couple hundred bucks extra a week and that's how they're going to do. They're going to get into Uber, Lyft platform or DoorDash or Grubhub or whatever. They're going to try to make the money any way they can. And as far as, you know, um, him saying, <laughs> see, <laughs> okay, I'm going to say it, screw it. Um, okay, I don't want to blow my chance with you, Mr. Rushier, but I'm going to say that you said, I'm never going to go broke. Now, if I sent you emails of people going broke right and left because they were doing right share without knowing their costs, you would be amazed. So maybe you should hire us, you know, to educate the driver community on cost per miles and things like that. The first driver, he said, you know, I will never go broke. I'm like, uh, no, actually, people do go broke because they don't know what the heck is going on out there. And you're not helping him to teach him how to do this as a business. And the second driver was like, you know, he was in construction. He could only make 600 bucks a week, but now he can drive and go to a bachelor party. I get it. I get it. You know, I understand. You always tell everybody, pick up every chip. You know, you make more money that way. We disagree here, obviously. You know, we decline here and then we know our worth. But um, I think I think that was a little bit of silliness, too. just like his tuna, fish, and dry passenger comment. So I was like, people do go broke, Mr. Richard, because people don't know their costs. And they buy these cars or they're in the Hertz rental program, brutal, brutal rates in those areas. So let's just call it the way it is, right? Rideshare is not what it used to be. Again, a good friend from, you know, Norma in, in Florida always says, you know, circle of control, circle of uh, influence. And your circle of control is to figure out your own cost and run this as a small business as we've done for months now. Okay, people. And if it's not a feasible situation financially, don't do right share. I'm, as a right share channel, we're saying don't do right share. What else? I mean, this, this is as straight as I can call it. So, you know, anyway, but uh, again, and so I how to that. How do you plan on perhaps streamlining some of these costs while also improving pricing power, not just for the drivers, but also for the customers as well? Yeah, that's my that's my challenge, you know, and but I'm up for that. Right. And I think, you know, people think in trade offs sometimes, but I think this is one where you don't get to choose. You both have to be price competitive. You have to be priced in line with where your, your um, the other guys are and you got to deliver a great service. And that's just I mean, like so many businesses, you know, you just have to figure that out. And we're very focused on making a profitable company long term. So that's uh, that's that's my challenge. David, what do you think the, the end game is, is here for Lyft? Is, is it part of another brand, another company, another tech player? You know, I mean, look, we always look at options like that and people approach us from time to time. But right now, our focus is on creating such a great service that in whatever configuration we're going to be relevant, you know, valuable, uh, you know, either as a standalone company or, or, or something else. Look, remember, too, you guys just ran a segment on electric vehicles, which, of course, leads to autonomous. As autonomous vehicles happen and you start to see, you know, interesting experiences within rideshare where maybe it's not a driver in the front seat, but a barista, all sorts of fun things can happen or a karaoke bar. I don't know. But the, if you sort of look way, way out, um, rideshare networks like this, like ours, are going to be really, really valuable. Certainly a long, a long play there indeed, but we're excited to. All right. So that's yeah. the end of that. <laughs> Whoa, that, that was a lot to unpack there. There was, there were a couple of things. First was the, uh, uh, will they be, you know, the standalone company or will they be something else? Then the EV brings the autonomous and then something about a barista or a karaoke bar, uh, and the real fun begins. Um, Whoa. Yeah, well, you know what? You said it best. So I'm just, all I heard there is, you know, wishes and dreams. Let's punt, you know, what do you call that? Hail Mary. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, if that's your plan, is, sir, I don't think it's going to work. Um, the only thing that, that he said there, that's kind of a hint. He goes, we, get, we have been approached multiple times before, and we get approached from time to time. That's your hint. Mm -hmm. that there are people who may be interested at a certain price, and I don't know how much lower they could be for them to be really interested in it, to take a bite. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, okay, what would you rate this interview, Chris? Um, you know, um, what, what, what's what grade? Like, we, we rated Harry a B- minus after the last Derek Oshoshaw interview. What what do you mm -hmm. rate uh, what, what are we rating on? His responses or the questions? Yeah, no, just him, just the CEO, just the CEO, yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a C plus. We're, we're exactly on the same page on that one. Yeah. And, yep. and I, I, it's not because he didn't say anything about the driver. 
And I, you know, I mean, for a veteran like me and you, nothing new. Oh, Norma. Oh, Norma. Wow, thanks for the super chat. You guys on the bus, CTV. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, yeah, we're gonna, you know, his interview is coming up too, right? I don't know which week it is, um, but his. I don't know, but you know what? I think David needs to talk to Elon because Elon went into Twitter and just cleaned the house. Uh, so let's see what happens there. You know, he's uh, getting rid of the check mark too for eight bucks. If you don't pay eight bucks, he's getting rid of the blue check mark. You should see all the LeBron is complaining because I'm not gonna pay eight bucks. I'm like, really, bro, bro? <laughs> if you're complaining, then what am I supposed to do? But thank you, thank you. Well, you know what? I think we're going to call this guy his name now. Obviously, he's not uh, Norma. His picture's on there. His name is Jeff. Another Jeff. Uh, another amazing Jeff. There we go, Jeff. Thank God. After three months, I can call your name now instead of calling you Norma. So <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, the my, my thing with this, C+, nothing new here for a veteran has been involved in the gig world for seven years now. I hope it works. We give you a chance. But, you know, there is a lot to fix. Look, man, your plate is full, but anytime you want to show up and chit-chat with our drivers, open invitation, sir. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.